To effectively manage and conserve wildlife, we need to know where they are and understand why they're there. But the reality is that across Africa, our knowledge of the whereabouts of many mammals is at best outdated, and at worst based on unverified anecdotes. Filling this crucial gap in our knowledge is the main aim of MammalMap, the African Mammal Atlas Project. It's fair to ask, if this information is so important to conservation, why has no one tried to update it already? The answer is simple. We were waiting for technology to catch up to our mammal atlasing enthusiasm. And one of the things we were waiting for was the camera trap. A camera trap is just like a regular digital camera in every way except one. Where a regular camera needs a hand to push a button in order to take a photograph, a camera trap is automatically triggered to take a photograph whenever something, anything, moves past its lens. Camera traps are not new inventions. They were first developed in the 1890s by a photographic pioneer named George Shiras. George's cameras were made up of a tripwire and a magnesium flash gun. An animal that bumped the tripwire would set off the flash, which was so bright that it would temporarily blind both George and the animals, and so terrifyingly loud that it would send the animals fleeing for their lives. This picture, published in 1906, was the first wildlife photograph to ever be published in National Geographic. Before this, few people had ever seen photographs of wild animals, so it's likely that George Shiras not only invented the camera trap, but that he helped to inspire the field of wildlife photography. It's a century later, and technology has come an incredibly long way. There have been massive improvements not just to photographic quality, but to battery power and camera reliability. Camera traps have also become smaller, more accessible, and more affordable. And as a result, today they are revolutionizing wildlife research and conservation around the world. For example, camera traps have helped us to discover brand new species. This is the grey-faced sengi, which is a species of elephant shrew that was not known to science until it was captured on a camera trap in South Central Tanzania in 2008 making it the first new species of shrew to be described in 120 years. Camera traps have also helped us to rediscover animals thought to be extinct in certain areas. This is an Amur leopard, believed to be extinct in China until one was photographed passing by a camera trap in 2010. There are thought to be fewer than 50 of these leopards left in the world, most of them in Russia, and camera traps are helping to identify where the remaining individuals are and which habitats are most important to them. Another example of a rediscovery comes from North America. Wolverines, once widespread across both North America and Europe, have shown such a decline over the last two centuries that they are thought to be absent from many parts of their historical range. In California in 2008, camera traps revealed the first wolverines to be seen in that part of the world in over 70 years. Camera traps are also responsible for some enlightening discoveries. The 2,800 square kilometer camera trap survey of the central Sahara is helping to monitor the critically endangered Saharan cheetah. Very little is known about this elusive creature, and camera traps are helping scientists to determine how many there are, where they are, and what can be done to help them survive. Camera traps are indiscriminate, and they take photographs of anything that moves in front of them, regardless of size or form. So sometimes you photograph things that you don't expect to see, like these potential poachers caught on camera in national parks in Laos and Vietnam. For the same reason, you might also land up with photographs of things that you would never want to see. Naked hiking is a seemingly popular pastime in some parts of the world, and camera traps could make it even more interesting than it already is. But let's return to Mammal Map an initiative that is jointly run by the Universities of Cape Town and Pretoria in South Africa. Over the next five years, the aim of MammalMap is to use camera traps, as well as other exciting and increasingly accessible technologies, like smartphones and GPS devices, to update the distribution records for all of Africa's wild mammals, the small ones, the big ones, the dry ones, and the wet ones. We're doing this in three ways. First is through data collection. We're initiating a number of intensive data collection projects across the continent 
with an initial focus in southern Africa. During these projects, we'll not only be collecting mammal distribution records, but we'll be testing new techniques and technologies for gathering information. Second is through collaboration. There are already hundreds of people across Africa who are using camera traps and other methods to detect where Africa's land and marine mammals occur today. By collaborating with these people, Mammal Map aims to consolidate all of this information into one centralized database. The third and final way that we are gathering information for Mammal Map is through citizen science. Possibly one of the most exciting things about Mammal Map is that participation is not restricted to scientists or people working in the field of conservation. Absolutely anyone, anywhere, young and old, can get involved. All you need is an interest in wildlife and to be a registered mammal mapper. Once registered, anyone can submit their African mammal photographs to the Mammal Map database. All of the photographic records that come into Mammal Map are processed in the same way. First, they all go into our online open access database, which we call the Virtual Mammal Museum. Once there, a team of experts identifies the records to species level. Then the database software uses the GPS coordinates that accompany each record to delineate the current geographic range of each species. Ultimately, we will compare these current ranges with both historical ranges and ranges determined in the future in an exercise that has multiple conservation benefits. First, it helps us to understand how animals are responding to both climate-induced and human-induced habitat changes, and allows us to make appropriate conservation decisions with these responses in mind. The information also helps us to update the conservation status of each mammal species, which ensures that all animals are adequately protected. It also helps us to identify the areas of the continent needing the most urgent conservation attention, and thereby directs the best ways to spend scarce conservation resources. Finally, by actively involving people of all ages, cultures and geographies, Mammal Map provides a cross-continental platform to increase awareness and understanding of Africa's biodiversity. To find out more about Mammal Map, go to our project website, join our Facebook group, or follow us on Twitter. Get involved and invite your friends and family to do the same. It's easy, it's fun, and it's important. So please help us to look out for and look after Africa's animals.